great to have you here. Welcome to the podcast with me and my guests from around the world. Welcome to the Simon Filer podcast. Welcome to this podcast. Let's get into it, shall we? On the Simon Filer podcast. Just out of the studio with Alex Nader, author of Who Killed Chloe, an exciting crime thriller based in Logan City in Queensland, Australia. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on my podcast today. A pleasure, Simon. Um, Who Killed Chloe is actually the first fiction work that I've had the pleasure of recording and the time absolutely flew past. I couldn't wait to eat up all the chapters and to solve the whodunit mystery, so... Thank you for coming in and reading that amazing, wonderful story to me. Oh, it was it was really fun to do. It was it was great to share it with someone, and in fact, it was lovely to get that feedback through the chapters as we did it as well. Mm. Uh, which I guess even if you release a novel, you wouldn't get that sort of feedback. So yeah. I really did appreciate that. That no, was, was good. It was one of the first books that I've thought, oh, don't go home, stay. <laughs> oh, well, we, we had some long sessions. But yeah, yeah, we did. You no, know, it was a lot of fun. And then also when you'd gone, I didn't want to go cheating and keep reading your books. I thought you were very restrained. <laughs> you held yourself back. I'm so lucky I get to hear the story straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Nay. So, <laughs> sorry. And a comedian, look at And a comedian. Oh, sorry, that was unnecessary. Okay. So, can you tell me, what was the inspiration? I really enjoy reading crime novels. And I'm an English teacher, so I've spent a lot of time uh, writing for kids. And occasionally I've written the odd short story. Uh, but lately I sort of started to think I'd really, you know, the path not taken, I'd really like to have a go at writing a whole novel mm. um, and obviously once I got up close there was a bit more to it than met the eye yeah um, to be fair um, but I really wanted to write a novel that Australian and particularly Queensland or Logan readers but Queensland readers would well, no Australians would relate to you know they were and I wanted to create strong female characters I also wanted to highlight the sort of challenges actually that just typical families and kids face uh, in the modern world. As a teacher of, oh, we won't put a figure on it, but quite a lot of years experience, I've watched the rise of technology and social media. Mm. And look, it's obviously, it's awesome to be able to go to Dr. Google or whatever. But on the other hand, I think it's been a bit of a Pandora's box technology, particularly for kids. You know, you talk, you hear about cyberbullying that follows kids home. They don't know how to deal with it. Nothing is private anymore. Once upon a time, I would have said shows like Home and Away kind of, you know, expose the world for everything it is. But now, who needs Home and Away? You know, it's all there right in front of them when they open up that laptop or they open up that phone. I think for parents, yeah, I think there's a lot parents need to sort of learn to, well, I don't think they can learn. I think there's a real limit to the control that um, parents have over what their kids see and do online. It's funny you should say that. I've got three kids and... You got three great kids. Oh, right? thank you. I'm very spoiled. I love my kids and I'm very lucky. But yeah, you know, now they're a bit older now, but I always thought, I wonder if I should police what they're doing on the phone. Oh, no, I trust them and whatever. Mm. And I do trust them. Mm. Mm. But you it's know, actually not about trust. It's it's it's, it's about out of your protecting. Control. It's about protecting, not trusting. Trying you know what to I mean? protect. Yeah. Doing yeah. what you can. Doing what you can. Everything seeps through. Yeah. yeah. So... And you've exposed a lot of that or, you know, you've brought that to the forefront. Well, I've tried to show some of the potential pitfalls, mm. you bet, in um, technology for kids. Um, yeah, I think it's a it's a real double-edged sword, you know. I, yeah. I think you've got a world of knowledge at your fingertips, but you've got a lot of other stuff at your fingertips as well. Yeah. And if you don't know how to negotiate it, yeah, you can find yourself in a lot of trouble, mm. as Chloe does in the book. Absolutely. Mm. When did you actually then decide, okay, I'm going to actually sit down and I'm going to write this book? Probably about two years ago, I guess, I made the final decision. Um, I think I did sort of, in my dedication, I mentioned my son who kind of said, it was school holidays because I'm a teacher, and he sort of said, yeah. so, you're going to write a book? You're going to start writing a book? Oh, isn't that good of Which him? Which is kind because of, he, he is quite, in fact, I, I would argue he's more of a writer than me and that he's really followed through on the writing which is not necessarily a big, I don't know, how can I, guaranteed job, but right. yeah, in speech marks. I'm telling you, he family. must be pretty good after he, hearing your book. He is very good. Um, mm, look out. But of course, 
like any young people, I've watched my kids be susceptible to all of the distractions as well of the internet. I've got boys. You've got girls. Mm. I've got boys. Yeah. It's a different kettle of fish for boys. Mm. There are different temptations. I think boys are drawn into the world of gaming yeah. in a way that a lot of girls aren't. Some girls are. With girls, it's more social media. With boys, it's gaming mm. and Oh dear, I throw out pornography, but without going in, yeah. Um, yeah. I do think, and I believe that actually has sort of far wide ramifications for relationships. Yeah. Well, I'm um, just thinking from the girl's perspective as well. You know, when yeah. I was a teenager, when I was younger, I wouldn't be putting up those, uh, well, like, you know, we had the disposable oh, cameras the or whatever. Oh, like, um, sending the pics to your, to your friend. Yeah, you know, or even just putting stuff. up stuff like mirror selfies or whatever they call them oh. in the Or well, you would Instagram. have called it up yourself. Yeah. You would have just said, oh, you're up yourself. <laughs> but now no one blinks an eye if no. you're in a public place taking a photo of yourself, yeah. um, let alone talking to yourself with your headphones in. <laughs> you know, once upon a time, people would have called you the mad woman of the village. That's but um, right. times have changed a hell of a Dramatically. lot. Dramatically. Dramatically dramatically yeah. um, and I guess I wanted to capture some of that but in the context of a, a good yarn a good story yeah uh, and as I said I wanted to create characters that um, that were real and that people would relate to mm. uh, and that would touch people with uh, what they went through yeah well that's yeah. So the, the characters, are they all fictitious or have you been, you're, you're a Does teacher? Does any writer actually <laughs> create totally fictitious characters? Because there is nothing original yeah. under the sun. That's know? right, you draw from um, something, don't you? So I suppose you draw on people you've known and experiences you've had and yeah. or vicariously, you know, other people's. You know, to, there's cer certainly, I suppose there's bits of myself in there, of course. Any author, there's going to be bits of themselves yeah. as well. Uh, so yeah, they're hybrids of, well, a, to a certain imagination and reality. It's a very juicy story and I guess it can, um, all age groups and I actually genders think, would like, I like do. the I story. I think this book kicks in probably in sort of mid-teens, really. Yeah. I think a lot of kids would kind of relate to Chloe um, to a certain point. That's a very scary world, you know, your world in that book in Who Killed well, Chloe. <sighs> I think one of the insights you gain as a teacher, I think we've had this conversation a little bit. I think sometimes parents underestimate how much their kids know. Yeah. And by that, I don't mean necessarily knowing bad stuff. I just mean how aware their kids are mm. of what's going on in the world. And I think kids have never grown up faster in history. Totally all agree. actually all yes and no. You go back to Romeo and Juliet, she was thirteen when she got married. Yeah. Um and puberty blues. And they were dead by thirty. So but that was <laughs> that was a different <laughs> time. Puberty blues, yeah. which is one I grew up with. I agree, totally Kathy, let's uh puberty blues. Yeah. I think as I said, I think sometimes parents underestimate just how much their kids know, mm. how much they've been exposed to. Well, they kind of do that because we don't like to think that they do know that much. Yeah. But actually they do. But they I don't want to let go of my babies. <laughs> well, it's it's not a case of letting go, I suppose. Get in the boot, I, girls. Case it's, um, I guess it's about just being there for them, keeping the lines of communication open. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, that positive, that I suppose kids don't like, nobody likes to feel judged, no. I guess. Yeah. So it's a fine line, I suppose, sometimes without to, to sort of make observations about what's happening in your kids' lives without coming across as judgmental. But I just wanted to bring up a range of sort of issues, whether it be, you know, just sexual activity, you know, being sexually active. Yeah. Um, but then again, some of the other more sinister aspects of the World Wide Web and how they can just touch on normal families in their day to day lives. Mm. Where scariness might be so close that you mightn't be aware that it could yeah, be so close. Totally. And in fact, one of the reasons I, you know, I have a, uh, the detective in the story is a single mother, yeah. with a, a 10 year old, 10 year old daughter. Yeah. So I guess she is particularly attuned or becoming more and more attuned to uh, some of the challenges and the risks that are out there. And I wanted, again, I wanted, um, I suppose I would love female readers to relate to her yeah. and to what she's going through, um, as well as obviously other characters in the story families yeah well you also addressed other family issues you know because all families are very different it's not mm, all rosy totally. you don't have a mum and a dad or not oh, everyone has a mum and a dad and right. you know there's split families yeah. and 
you've addressed you've addressed many topics that are very current today in today's society with yeah with split families yeah. with the internet with what goes on on the dark web even on mm -hmm. the yeah. yeah. organized um you know organized pedophile rings or yeah. child exploitation rings which are real this book has got it all people you want to read this book and you want to get your kids to read this book to protect them half or to make them at least be aware of what the possibilities that could could happen all I, in yeah. amongst a super crime move, a well, movie I, i'm already calling it a movie <laughs> i think it has potential for a, yeah and eric banner's got to play one of the characters yeah. and when you read it you'll well know i who. did i found jane harper quite inspirational i found her writing really accessible and her characters very accessible and um i guess she was one of the writers in recent years who made me think you know i'd really like to do that i you know i'd like to to write something that is how can i put it not pretentious but relatable yeah. and that people could uh, connect with yeah. i think you've done that i've really enjoyed listening to your story alex immensely and i'm really fortunate that you've come in and um you know read it to me so so thank you when you were much younger because you're a teacher now mm -hmm. um and you said you have been for many years and you're saying like you know i could probably have a bit of a break from that did you ever think i want to write a book or was I, it only think, your son saying let's do this i possibly have always been a bit of a frustrated writer and i guess as a teacher well an english teacher in particular there is a certain level of outlet in that you write a lot in the course of your day-to-day -day life i don't know if people quite realize this but um english teachers in their classrooms do right you know you you share the thought processes you share the creative process mm. with your students you write an introduction and model it, model it so i guess that's been an outlet for me over time that i've enjoyed uh doing um but i guess i kind of wanted to take the opportunity to you know actually follow through and take a storyline all the way through and um, create a novel mm. and hopefully i've written one that people will find engaging yeah i definitely think they will and you've been very unique about this being very modern with the times because you haven't gone to print straight away like a lot of authors do and i must congratulate you because i say this to all the authors that i've worked with that only two percent of people that actually sit down to start a book actually finish it and become published i can kind of see why yeah because it takes a certain amount of tenacity to to follow it through yeah. and i guess one of the things i did learn through the course of writing a book is that i wouldn't go as far as to say books write themselves but um they certainly mutate and morph as you're writing them mm. and um and I, I made the comment somewhere that you know the characters took on lives of their own and i did find my characters sort of filling themselves out mm. in the course of writing it and and that was really it was satisfying but it was I wouldn't say an invisible hand guiding but um but they do take on yeah it does kind of just develop its own path find its own path that, that, and that was a lot of fun it was it was fun that's cool i've other authors have said that as well like it it's something just drove me I yeah was, there... well I, I mean i started off with i literally wrote the prologue and then sat back which is the fine i don't think it's a big spoiler to say um a girl's body turns up in the toilets of a high school in logan no and by the way stranger things have happened i then had to work out how she got there so <laughs> so the first the prologue came easy the prologue was really easy right. sort of yeah. and then it was just okay now what <laughs> and that's when i had to really sit back and think okay so what is her story and so through the course of the novel i there are two parallel sort of plot lines one plot line follows chloe and her activities through the course of an evening that finds her in the morning uh dead in a boy's toilet block and the other plot line is sort of neck and neck and it's the um local police trying to find a killer i've really got to love the characters all of them you've built them so well you really they're all relatable mm, i yeah, think so i are, think they're pretty realistic yeah and i know uh, one of the things i start off with chloe is fairly stereotypically selfie addicted and fairly shallow i suppose yeah um teenage girls but what <laughs> well which on the surface might be a lot of teenage girls but yeah, a lot but of us on true. the surface are all sorts of things yeah and when you scratch the surface yeah, you actually was... find a real person yeah um and I, that's exactly what i wanted to do with chloe i wanted people through the course of the novel to get below the surface and realize that chloe was actually a sentient uh, human being 
with issues who was facing challenges mm. and that people may not have understood about and you know that people didn't realize yeah uh, without giving too much away yeah. uh yeah so i wanted her to become three-dimensional yeah so she kind of starts off as a bit one-dimensional but by the time you've got through you realize no she's a real girl and they are real family I might have to listen to it again after I've edited it. I'm looking forward to everybody having a listen to it when it's out. So basically, as soon as I get it uh, edited, we'll get it up and online available at Audible, Amazon and and everywhere else it's available. Each it's year. very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. So that's what I was going to ask you before. Usually people, a lot of people go to publishing their print copy first, but you've gone a different way, being very modern, of course, to Alex. Um, so you're doing ebook and doing audio. I'm hoping to get an ebook out at about the same time as the audio book is launched. Excellent. Yeah, so we'll see how I go with that. Yeah. Um, and this is your first book. It is the first book. First that of I've many completed. Um, well, I'd love to try and do it again, but um, I guess I'd like to have a bit of encouragement <laughs> in okay. response to this. One. We'll have to have a chat with your son then. He seemed to do well at this. Well, one. he did well. He got me. He got me going, and and yeah. So I really appreciate. And what sort of stuff does he write? Is he, has he written a novel as well? He is. Uh, he's written sort of film scripts, oh. um, large chunks of novels. Right. As you said, finishing's hard. Yes. Uh, certainly some great short stories. Some of those have been published nice. uh, over time. Maybe um, you can do a collab with him. Well, to a point we have, you know, he has been a collaborator on this right. to a point. Okay. He certainly helped me with the cover design. Yeah, the cover is using excellent. Using his, um, his digital you know expertise not yeah. well, just well just coming up with some ideas helping with ideas it is nice to have common ground with your kids obviously yeah for mm. sure so what inspired you to decide to want to do an audiobook i think in the modern world i think the audiobook uh is, a, is appealing to a lot of people i think it fits into their lives they can be multitasking they can be having a you know a, a walk a run uh they can be around the house doing things it's a fun way to convey a story and certainly as an author narrating it, I think it's a really personal uh, connection mm. to the listener. I Look, I'll be realistic as well. I think getting a foot into publishing houses isn't easy for anyone in terms of print media. You know, I'm pleased to say I, I, I certainly can see that books are still alive and well. And should someone hear my audio book and wish to publish it, um, I'm there. <laughs> uh, however, here's my number. <laughs> it struck me as something I could take a certain amount of control over yeah and make happen with your guidance and professional support thank you um and just make something happen for myself yeah in a way that the big publishing houses just can't offer um unless you're very lucky or perhaps you've already got an established reputation yeah so it struck me as i you know i can see i i think more and more people are venturing into audiobooks mm. so i thought why not yeah good for Give you delivering the story yourself is a really good thing because I do think if people don't have the time to sit down and read books and they listen to audio books it's so good to hear the author narrating it because it, it really made me well obviously you know the story so mm. well it really mm. made me feel like I was coming into your world and, mm. you know mm. I enjoyed the process and I suppose I hate to mention being a teacher again because I'm and I don't want that to put anyone off but <laughs> I'm quite used to reading to a group yeah you know, that's it's part of my you know it's my bread yeah. and butter so well I was thinking about you being a teacher and that's I mean you're an English teacher and obviously grammatically you're teaching the, the kids you're also structurally mm, teaching the mm. kids but the one thing you've also got as an advantage is that I can't imagine every English teacher would have and that's creativity to come up with something like that yeah is well that thank you that's no that's really nice of you to say that yeah. and um it was an exercise in, well, planning, constructing, creating characters, developing a plot. Um, I guess it took all of the little things, the, the tools of my trade, and stretched them. And I found it, as I said, challenging but satisfying. And um, I really hope that listeners enjoy the ride mm. and actually um, enjoy the product. Awesome. Obviously. Have you got any advice for wannabe writers that have maybe got a story? Just get writing, I suppose. Keep writing. Don't be put off by, I suppose, people talk about J.K. Rowling, who submitted her book to X number of publishers before they accepted 50, it. 50,000 million times. Whatever. That's what you've um, got to do. That's and the way. by the way, that's not putting myself on the same page as J.K. Rowling. But 
I think a big part of writing is just for your own satisfaction and your own pleasure. Yeah. And I think if you if you consider that straight at first up, then you can't go too far wrong. Mm. And if you have an opportunity then to share it and other people get some pleasure, well, that's a bonus. Oh, that's um, but awesome. I think that's not a bad way to think about writing. Um, and yeah, you, there's a lot to be gained from it. I think it helps people to basically uh, sort out their problems. You know, it's a great way to sort of think through issues in your own life. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be gained. Write more. Hmm. So where can people contact you? Well, I am in the process of um, popping a toe a bit more into social media. I'm well aware of social media's <laughs> influence. And I guess because of that, it's not necessarily been something I've personally embraced in my own life. So I'm having to embrace it a little bit more in order to share uh, what I've got to yeah. share. Uh, I will hopefully be getting up um, an Instagram page, perhaps Alex Nader or Who Killed Chloe. I'm not quite sure yet. And a Facebook page, and, maybe? And a Facebook page. Yeah. I know. I'm, I've been something of a technology uh, <laughs> I don't want to do this. I don't want to do um, this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, well, I think, it's time, Alex. I think a hell of a lot of time gets sucked into the net yeah. that could be used a lot more productively. Yeah, like writing books. <laughs> well, but I can see that um, it is a way, obviously, to connect. Mm. And so, yes, I will be looking into those media. Well, I will keep you posted. In the meantime, if you want to get in touch with Alex, then you can contact her through me, through That'd Brisbane Audio Book Production. That would be awesome. Obviously, I would absolutely be open to that. Yeah, or just put a comment down on the end of this podcast and say, hey, I want to get in touch with Alex to grab the book and maybe have a chat. But really good talking with you today. Thanks for staying on for my podcast. Oh, pleasure, Simone. And recording with me. And I hope I wish you all the best of success with your story. I think it's fabulous. And I have no doubt anyone that listens to it is going to love it. It's just a matter of telling people that you're here and here's my story. So yep. as many people as possible, do yourself a favour in the words of Molly Meldrum mm -hmm. and have a and listen. Thank you. You did a great job and made it painless. Yeah. So thank you very much. You're more than welcome. And let's hope a second story will do it again, yeah? I hope so. Did I? Thanks for joining me. Thank you. And my guests from around the world. Thank you for being a part of this show. The Simon Filer Podcast. Catch you next time. It's a wrap.